knowledge of you. Open the eyes of our understanding and give us life. Give us L-I-F-E in our thoughts, in our minds. Not life as we know it, but life as you have given unto us. Your life. And in that, give us an understanding of the glory of your inheritance in us as saints. And an understanding of the exceeding greatness of your power toward us who believe. Yes. Lord, as we sit here this morning in unbelief, Lord, help our unbelief that we can believe and receive all that you have for us with perfect understanding, even as Luke testified in the first chapter of the Gospel having had perfect or complete understanding of all things from the beginning. We thank you for it. We expect it. And we receive it now in Jesus' name. Everybody said? Amen. 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 I have, uh, I have to tell you, I will in no way try to complete this today. There's a vast amount of information that is so relevant about giving. When, uh, when we talk about giving, the first thing we think about is dollar bills. We think about uh, tithes. We think about offerings in a monetary value. And in reality, giving is much more than that. Giving comes out of what you've already received. That's right. Let me say that again. The foundation of giving comes out of what you have already received in Christ. If you would, you can turn. If you have a Bible, I, I would that you would bring a Bible. It's a good thing to practice, to learn to get through the manual of life. But in Ephesians chapter 1, I, I want to read a verse. And I'm, I'm reading from the New King James Version in verse 3. And the word of God says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. We read it with some spiritual blessing. That he's blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly, in the heavenly in Christ. He has blessed us already. What does the word blessed mean? Blessed means to be in, in, endowed or endued with power to prosper. Amen. Not in some things, but in all things. 
And the summation of being blessed is that there's nothing missing. There's nothing broken in our life. We have the completeness of Christ Amen. manifest in our mortality. That is so in sync with Galatians 2 and 20. Paul says that I was crucified. But it has to be more than Paul. We must have the same testimony because if the testimony is the truth. I was crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live in the life that you see in this mortal vessel before you. I live by the faith of Jesus who loved me and gave himself for me. I don't have self-generated faith. That's right. <laughs> Amen. I live by the faith of Jesus because he didn't come to give me life. He came to give me his life. John 10.10, 10, it says the thief comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. And we have so empowered the negative. And there's a culture of kingdom reality that so cancels out the negative and brings in the blessing that we've already been given into manifestation in everything around us. What's this have to do with giving? Everything. The body and ministry often has focused on money. If we bring in a notorious speaker, a person with great notoriety, we bring them in, or a ministry will bring them in. They bring them in for the purpose of gaining monetary benefit. Come on. And when we have that kind of focus, when we give to get, come on. Come on. When we give to get, it's on a focus of my personal gain and benefit. Pad my pocketbook. Fill my bank account. I want to be as rich as Bill Gates. And in reality, if you're in Christ, you have everything Bill Gates has and probably more. I don't know his spiritual status, so I'm not indicting this man. I'm just making a comparative value. That we need to facilitate in the realm of reason between our ears and behind our eyes. I've been so gripped with this subject and how it affects so many other things that are relevant to our well-being day by day, week by week, month by month, how we live and exist. The book of Acts tells us that in him, in him, who's him? In Jesus. Yes. I live. I move. Yes. I have my existence. Yes. Not outside of him. He is not existential. He is the product of my being right here, right now. And if you're in Christ, he is the same product. Yes. Whether you believe it or not, because it's in him that we live. My existence comes from knowing him, living in him, having my being in him. But if that's not a conscious reality, we lose sight of it. You may hear some things this morning, and by the time you get home this afternoon, or before you even get home, you may get a phone call, you may have a bump in the road of what you call life, and you get all distracted and lose what you've heard. We do that so easily. I have never seen creatures more distracted than humans. Well, amen, Brother Bob. <laughs> That's not a negative. Think about it. Let's, let's be observant. Let's, let's calculate between our ears. Let's think about what was just said. I'm wrong. Ask yourself a question. How easily am I distracted? What gets my attention? Some blame? 
Come on. I want a bigger house. <coughs> I'm tired of this old car. I'd like to have a new car. We're going home. We leave him here. We've been in the presence of God. You can't come here and not experience the presence of God. You cannot come to Emmanuel Church at Ohio, 9441 Smoke Road, and not, and not experience <coughs> the presence of God. God is manifest in presence here all the time. From the day one that I've been in this place and have come in, I have never come in here and not experienced the presence of God, whether I've been by myself or in the corporate setting. So with that, I want to give something. Can I give something right now? I want to give. I live to give. I live to give. Jesus lived to give. Giving is living. If you didn't get that, get it now. Living is giving. I want to give honor to Roger and Rhonda. I want to give them honor because honors do them. <coughs> the labor of love and dedication to Jesus. And out of that, the benefit that Emmanuel Church has experienced for 22 years. Hello. Think about it. 22 years. And my gosh, Roger's been so distracted and so fond of All kinds of things have taken their focus and detracted it from the purpose and the will of Jesus. I don't think so. A faithful man abounds in the blessing. You can check that out in Proverbs. Because I quote a scripture doesn't mean I have to tell you where it's at. You need something to do to help you with your distraction. A faithful man abounds in blessing. Since I've been here, the short time that I've been here and been involved with her life, I have seen promotion after promotion. Promotion comes from the Lord. It doesn't come from the north, south, east, or west. It comes from the Lord Jesus Christ. He promotes us all. Yes. Well, Roger earned that. No. Roger received it. Rhonda earned that. No. Rhonda received it. I honor you in Christ this morning. And I give you that honor. Because it's due you. Not to patronize you, but just to simply, profoundly honor to whom honors do. Yes. Amen? Amen. See, living is given. Let's look at Acts 20, verse 35. I didn't give Brian any list of scriptures, there's too many. But these in particular, the ones that I enunciate, these are the ones I really want your attention. Well, I don't, but the Spirit of God, and I do because I'm in agreement with him, wants your attention given to. In Acts 20, 35, he said, I've shown you, Paul's talking here, I've shown you in every way by laboring like this that you must support the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus that he said. You see that little preface right there? It says that he said, not Paul said. This is what Jesus said. Mm -hmm. It is more blessed to receive than give. Come on. Come on, let's get it right. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Yeah. Living is what? Giving. Giving. In the
the body of Christ, there are givers and there are takers. Yeah. Yep. And I was going to put a third category. I deserve to have in my mind. I don't know if it was John or Bob. <laughs> <laughs> There are givers, takers, and fakers. Oh, wow. <laughs> Come on. I think about another place in Scripture. See, this is not a meritorious mindset or standard of living. It is something that we have received by favor. I draw your attention back to Ephesians 1, verse 3. It says, he has blessed us with some no, all. spiritual blessings. Yeah. All of them. Well, let's dig around in this a little bit because this is so relevant to where the Spirit of God is taking us in this course or in this discourse of information. We say all spiritual blessings. Because we're so distracted, we live in a spiritualized life and a naturalized life. Yeah. Well, that's true. To spiritualize is not to ever realize what's already been made true of you and where you are already positionally seated in the heart and the mind of God. What is literal in the spirit versus a spiritualization. We live from a natural essence trying to be spiritual. That's spiritualizing. That's the King James Smith translation. <laughs> and it's a good one. We try to spiritualize. And when we do that, we excuse ourselves. The first thing that happens is we excuse ourselves from the very truth that is so profoundly clear in the scriptures of what is true of us in God, in Christ. Yeah. I don't know where you see yourself seated this morning. If you think as a believer, if you're in Christ and you think that you're just sitting here in a chair in the auditorium, <clears throat> of Emmanuel Church, then you don't know where you are. I'm seated right now with Jesus in the heavens. Yes. I'm speaking from the heavens. Yes. I'm not speaking from an earthly mentality or an earthly reality, but I'm speaking from heaven because this is what causes the effect of change to the purpose and intent of God or the intended purpose of God to become manifest in the earth. The earth was corrupted because man was given dominion over the earth. Yep. When Adam fell, dominion fell with yep. it. That's good, yeah. And all of creation that was under that dominion fell under the curse. Yeah. Yep. Come on, somebody. All of it, not some of it. All of it yeah. fell. But when Jesus came, and Jesus was crucified, and Jesus died, and when Jesus was buried, he removed the curse. Yes. He removed the cause of the curse. And when he was made alive, and when he was raised, and when he was seated, he restored dominion in righteousness and in true holiness. Yes. And our brains have not caught up with what is true about us. And that we have the control. That's right. It's in our hands. Yes. Let's look at First Peter. Get anything out of this? Yes. Yes. Living is what? Living. Yes. I love the word. I love the Holy Spirit. He knows how to put it all together. Amen. And it flows. It's got power in it. Yeah. It 
brings release in my life to be free in the liberty where with Christ has made me free. It makes me to stand in it. That's just a quoting of another scripture, but you can find it. But it's true. In first in first Peter one, verse three it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Sounds like Ephesians one three. Two different human writers, but one original writer. So he's congruent in his thought. Come on. Who, according to his abundant mercy, has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Verse 4. To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for me. You can give that to somebody else, but that's for me. I took the you out and made me. If you don't make it personal, you want to give it to somebody else. Who's it reserved in heaven for? Oh, you're not very strong. You don't believe that, man? That was weak. <laughs> Who's it reserved for? Me. So you need to hear yourself say what's true of you. Man, I, I got excited and my page is turned by themselves. Holy Ghost is in here. It must be the door and the gates opening and closing by itself. Look at verse 5. Who are kept by the power. I am kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in this time, in this last time. Amen. The last time began 2014 years ago when Jesus appeared at the end of the eons the ages. And he put away the ages of sin and death and brought us forth into a new heaven, into a new earth. Yes. Into all things are new. God doesn't make new things, but he makes all things new. He's yes. made me new. He's made you new. Thank you. It's revealed in this time. Yes. It's not coming. It's already been revealed. Come on. Why are we partaking of it? Do I really counsel in myself that he has begotten me? That means he has made me alive from death. Yeah. I have no more death. If you are in Christ, your confession is, I have no more death in me. I have what? No more death in me. Still take me a minute just to lay a foundation. We might get to teach on this someday. What have we heard so far? It's more blessed to give than receive. That the God and Father of the Lord Jesus Christ has blessed us, given to us, deposited to our account all spiritual blessings in the heavens. Let me transpose a word here from heavens to the invisible. We know that the worlds were framed by the word of God. When's the last time you saw a word? Did you see the words you spoke to Roger this morning? Did you try to catch them? Have you ever tried to catch your words? Come on, there's a point here. I'm not being facetious. that what 
is made is created from things that were not made. How are all things being held together even now? By the same power of the, of the same creation power, why are you not coming apart while you're sitting there in the chair? Why are these chairs and this floor and this building being stayed in a state of solidarity? Why are they not coming apart? Why does not the earth lose itself in, in a, being flung out of orbit at the speed that it's traveling? Why do we get flung off the face of the planet? Oh, geez, what's wrong with you, you stupid? It's gravity, man. <laughs> <laughs> Now let's be reasonable in scripture and in truth because we're being held by the same power by which we were created and what this was created from the word of God. Yeah. Which is greater? What you're sitting on or what holds it together? God says in Isaiah, come now, let us reason together. Well, we're not dealing with sin anymore, but he's still inviting us. Come on, let's reason. Let's talk. Mm -hmm. See, we live by the, by the element and the ability to reason from the faculty of what's between our ears and behind our eyes. Mm -hmm. We have not known how to exercise those senses by the Spirit because we have not tapped into the resources yep. that have already been given to us that are in the heavenlies, in Christ Jesus, yep. given to you. Yeah. Already on your account, on your deposit. Deposited on your account. I don't care which way you say it's gonna come out the same. The frailty of human reasoning pales. That's not even an accurate term. Human reasoning has no counsel against the perfected will of the Father yeah. that's already on the top. <clears throat> because you think you can reason away, and because you think you may be able to take the scriptures and dumb down these kind of things, you still cannot have any effect against what God has already blessed you with. He's unrelenting. I love that song when Larry sings that song, Larry Berry. He won't relent till he has it all. He didn't relent. He's got it all. Guys getting tired? Yeah. I want us to think about I would like for the Holy Spirit to engage how you think. Engage in your thought processes. When the Spirit of, of, of the Lord and the Word of the Lord come to us, is our ability to receive always in place? Even though what God says is true and is irrevocable, you cannot change it. The gifts and calling of God are without repentance. The gifts, what's the gifts? He's blessed us with all spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. He has raised us up and given us an inheritance that's reserved, where? In the invisible, that will not ever fade. But how do we receive? I want you to think about the wealth of Bill Gates. He's, he's multi-billionaire. Thank God that we have Microsoft. Thank God that we have Apple. Thank God that I like apples. 
Thank God that I like Gates. I'm not talking about Bill Gates. Thank God for open Gates. But think about having an account where there are billions and billions on your account. And you struggle with the idea. And, and, and this is correlated to just preaching about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus because this is where it comes from. But it's part of the whole. God has blessed you with billions upon billions. And think about making a withdrawal and all of a sudden you're able to receive what God has put on deposit on your account and now you're able to receive that in your spirit. Now you want to access it. We are written to in the book of Romans that we have access by faith into the grace. Grace is what empowers us in our life to produce what's already been blessed to us from an invisible state to a natural state. Right. People say they understand grace. I wonder sometimes. But how do I access it? And what happens, by the way, when I start drawing on the blessings of the Lord that are already put on my account? What literally happens in the invisible? Before you can draw out the first billion, God's putting five back. You didn't hear that. Before you can draw the first billion out, God's replaced it with what? Five more. Then he'll get in your grill when you see it and say, I want you to spend this before the day's out. And by the way, before you get it all out, I'm going to put ten back. Come on, how far are we up the ladder right now? 16 billion. And then he said, oh, by the way, before you get that out, I'm going to put 20 back. The more that you draw from the blessing is the more that you understand that living is given. It's the motive of operation that's in the body and what we've been counseled in for decades, for centuries, about giving that really hinders us receiving and accessing the blessing. We are in a totally new covenant. The old is obsolete. And God said it is passing away. Means that it is no more. Just as my sins went to the place of my perishing in Christ, I can't dig up my old man, and you can't either, no matter how hard you try. And you try to contradict God and say, no, I still got an old man, he's still dragging around behind me. No, it's not true, that's a lie. You believe a lie, and what do you do? What does it say in the scripture? It says, believe a lie and what? Be, be damned. What does the word damn mean? What does a damn do? You put a dam across the river. What does it do? What does it do? You can divert a whole river in the course of when it was created to flow in. And it overflows its banks and floods everything around it. And when flood time comes, is that a destructive value? Absolutely. So we can believe. Would it be amazing to find out that maybe we believed some things wrong for years and years? How dare you? I know the word of God. Don't tell me I'm the possibility I've been believing wrong. Well, I'm not trying to tell you that. I'm telling you I believe that. I know that. Roger talked about a shift. There's a shift. And in the end of October, when I came back from Missouri, I went through a major shift in my whole life. And I haven't moved from it. It's a life-long shift. 
I see things different. I hear differently. And I see people differently. If you will, I see people more clearly now than I've ever had. But what's that mean? doesn't mean anything if it's not in the purpose of his intent. But my mind has been challenged, and there's things that have to change because when truth comes, it shows a lie for what it is. I have been a dam to my own blessings for most of my life. What you said, Brother Bob, Oh, yeah, no, people say, I'm a self-made man. I've done this, I've done that, and I've made my way, and we got our chest out, and we're just strutting like a peacock. I made it. I got the bling, I got the thing, I got it all. No, you ain't got nothing. You, you're doing something out of your own works. And maybe you've had increase. I worked for myself for a while, and I know what it is to go from poverty to riches. Overnight. But then I know what it is to just live by faith and still be a damn to the blessing. Even though you can see a thing, doesn't mean you can access it. I hope I'm getting through. I'm just laying a foundation. Is this all right? Are you guys feeding off of this? Or you get mad if you've got questions, you're going to come back. And if you, if you got a problem with what's being taught today, I, I counsel you, don't talk to Roger about it. Don't talk to anybody else about it. You come see me. I'll talk to you. I take full responsibility for what I'm sharing. How can I access the invisible and bring it into the reality? How did Jesus who was spirit, become humanity that we could see him and behold his glory. Well, well God did that. Well, that's no information. We know God did it. How could Jesus die and why, how could he stand and say in a place of that That no man takes my life. If I lay it down, I have power to what? Take it up again. Yeah. And we all run around and we say, I'm blessed. <laughs> we say, I'm blessed. No, I'm not doing that mockingly. We say, I'm blessed. How are I'm blessed. We're coughing, we're sneezing, we're wheezing, we're sick. <laughs> but I'm blessed. How are you feeling today? I feel good. I'm blessed. How's everything? Fine, hallelujah, lying through your teeth. I'm blessed. You see, if I believe a lie, and I'm damning up the flow of life in my own life, then my perception is off. And my perspective is off. I don't know about you, but that's how it is for me. But when I can see the lie for what it is, so when I don't feel good, I don't feel good. Right. I'm still in Christ, but I don't feel good. Right. But I've learned something. Not just recently, I've learned this, and I've walked in it for years. I speak to the thing that's afflicting me and tell it it has no authority to be, because if Jesus doesn't have this symptom, I don't either. Right. And guess what happens to the symptoms? They go. See, accessing the blessings that are reserved, that will not fade away, the inheritance that's already yours. Anybody here ever receive an inheritance besides me? Somebody died, you received an inheritance. You have an inheritance. Are you accessing your inheritance? That fades not away, reserved in heaven right now. Are you accessing that? Are you drawing out of that? If you have a perfect understanding, I'm going to sit down and let you teach. <clears throat> this is the whole point. This is the point that we're making. And I'm belaboring it because there's an issue here because we are challenged 
if I'm believing a lie or if it's really the truth that I've been walking in for years. One of the biggest lies that's been advocated in ministry is that if we have a name brand minister come in, then we're going to raise funds for the building. And that might be true. But what's the focus of it? Is it for the deposit of Jesus or the deposit in the bank account? Is it for the love of money because, uh, because we're small, we're needy, or because we're big and we're greedy? The big get bigger, and the small get bigger. Bigger in what? Whatever's real in your mind, that's what gets bigger. But the focus is, if I'm going to bring somebody in, we're going to raise funds so we can be able to do some things, what kind of power am I relying on? I'm relying on wrong power. Money is not the power of God. Come on. What he said? Yep. What I said. Wrong power. When ministry focuses on, now I'm gonna I'm gonna do a little deal here. Let, let me scoot this over just a little bit. And then I'll feel free to do this because I don't have to look at the word. Now, here's what and here's what's propagated. Now the Lord told me. This is on your TV. If you watch televangelism. And I know we're live streaming. But this is what's, what's happening. Now, if you'll sow into this ministry and send your $100 check, God will multiply it by 10. You'll be blessed. Where does that take the focus of the believer? You give to me. Empty your checking account today. You've got to trust God. If you have faith, Timothy, he said, the love of money is the what? Root of all evil. Well, in our economy, if you have money, you can buy this, that, something else, whatever you want, you can buy. But is that power? Is that the real power? Still laying the foundation. Are you getting tired this morning? Maybe that's enough to digest for today, huh? Get one more home run. Get one more home run. Think about it. Living is what? Giving. Living is not getting. Living is giving. It is more blessed. Jesus, and he said, Paul is quoting Jesus, and he said, the Lord Jesus, remember the words of the Lord Jesus that he said, it is more blessed to 
give than receive. The greatest commodity that we have to give is the seed of the word of this life. Amen. Amen. We got two amens to the month that tells you the rest of you don't know that. Amen. Jesus said the sower went out to sow. He expounds on the parable and he said the, the seed is the word of God. What changes everything around you and changes everything in you is the word. Yes, yes, yes. Do you know that you are the harvest of God? You are God's harvest. And that harvest is always the seed. You are not seeds, you are the seed. We understand that in the Old Covenant, I'm going to get ahead of myself. I'm not. I'm not going to get ahead of myself. In the Old Covenant, people gave. I'm not even, I'm not even interested in the Old Covenant. In that vernacular, but we have to go there for this teaching. Because unless we present things that are what we call present truth in our life and don't have a comparative, you wouldn't know a crooked from a straight. Is that right? Yeah. So we are the seed. We are the harvest. You are God's harvest. Why, does, why do we pray the prayer in Ephesians 1? That we may know the glory of your inheritance, Father, in us the saints. Hello seed. Hello God's inheritance. If we're God's inheritance, what's our inheritance? Some blessings in the heavens. The fading blessings. The fading inheritance. When I'm feeling the spirit and the juice of the power of the spirit, then I'm conscious that I have an inheritance reserved in heaven that will not ever fade away. Bless God, it's mine. But when it becomes part of my consciousness, having my heart sprinkled from an evil conscience, but having a righteous conscience, understanding that I'm blessed, whether it looks like it or not, I have an inheritance that I have I can't even begin to exhaust. Thank you. But if I can't, if I don't know how to access and to literally draw out of that into my own life, what good does it do me? Sue Leg has an inheritance. She got forty billion dollars that she inherited. But she never writes a check on the account. Number one, the first thing is if somebody told, and I'm not, I'm just using that for an example. I'm not picking it. You know, I can use myself. But I, I'm, I'm not inferring anything on Sister Sue. But just as an analogy, if, if even though we've heard these things, and, and this morning we've heard it anew and afresh, doesn't make it a reality between my ears. Right. And so if I have unbelief, Well, God says I've got a $40 billion account, but I never draw on the account. Why? Why do I never go and access the account? Because I believe something other than what God said is true. And that's where we are. We believe that we are drawing from an account other than what God says is true about us. The vastness of blessing. And we, we, uh, how many have heard that song? Count your blessings. Yes. 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 Well, go ahead. Somebody want me to stay there? Do you even know what's in your blessing account? We have a lot. Yes. 
I'm, I'm hearing a lot. I'm hearing everything. Or maybe. So let me let me conclude this morning. I'm, I'm not, I feel just like I just need to quit right about here. But let me conclude this morning saying this. If I can't see it. This is humanity. If I can't see it, I don't believe it. But let me bring that into the realm of the spirit, into the realm of the invisible, in the realm of the heavens. The eye of God in all believers in Christ is the mind renewed to the truth of what God says. You do not see with your natural eyes, you see with your mind renewed in the mind of Christ. That's what a person, Jesus say, said to the Pharisees, he said, because you say you see, your sin remains. This is not, this is not the inference here. But I can see by the scripture that we're blessed with all spiritual blessing, but if I don't really see that, if I don't have an understanding of that blessing, that inheritance, I don't see it. Even though I say I do see it, my state remains damned. So living is giving. The ability to see is my mind renewed to the truth. I have to feed on the word of God. I have to feed by the spirit. Not by my natural facility to think and process, but by the spirit of the living God that dwells with me with my recreated spirit also involved is the mind of Christ that's in that midst. And I have the ability, I have an overwhelming ability to see everything that God says is true about me. But if I don't rely and don't take counsel and rely on that which is available to me, then I remain in a damned up state. And even though the word says I'm blessed, I don't see it, I become discouraged, I become disillusioned. And I forget about it. How many of you hang around with the negative things that come up in your life? You just hang right on to the negative. We lose hope. What does hope, hope <coughs> do? Makes the heart sick. But when the desire comes, what is it? It's a tree of life. See, we, God has called us to life. Amen. He's called us to peace. He's called us to the same level of wholeness that he is. We already have it. But we don't know how to walk in it. We don't know how to access it. We don't know how to draw from the account of blessing that's on deposit for me as a believer. And I'm talking about every single one of us. Amen. You didn't get any more than I did. I'm the least of the brethren, but you didn't get any more than I did. God doesn't have any individualism. Proverbs tells us that it's not good to show partiality. James brings that very proverb up, but he says it in a different format. He said in Proverbs 28, it says, it says, it's not good to show partiality for a morsel of bread a man will transgress. James said, if you see a rich man come in and there's this brother sitting up on the front, and you see this rich man come in and you prefer him over the brother, you tell this brother to go to the back and sit down. You go down, you, you go sit down over there and we give preeminence to this. He's trying to tell us by grace and truth in Christ. Again, if you can hear it. If you can hear what the Spirit is saying to you, the church. Money is the wrong power Amen. of a focus. For a believer. I didn't say money wasn't going to be useful in the kingdom, right. but money is a tool that God has given to humanity to fulfill the intent of his purpose. That's right. Amen. What is living? Giving. 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 Father, I thank you for the word.